Good morning. This is Erica with Launching Legacies. Welcome to our daily devotional. Today we are talking, uh, starting a new devotional on hope. And so the concept that we're going to look at is misplaced hope. And uh, it's an interesting concept because I was having um, uh, my time of prayer with the Lord and the Lord was saying to me, I want you to discuss to discuss this concept of people feeling like um, there's no hope. And I'm like, okay, so what does that mean? So it's like, okay, well, people feel like there's no hope. And the issue isn't that there is no hope, that there is no hope of a good future or hope of a good outcome. The issue is that hope is often misplaced. And so I was, I was um, spending time in reflection and thinking about it. And I went to a passage in Genesis that I'll share with you today. But before we do that, let's make sure we understand what hope is is by definition and so we look here at the definition of hope i'm looking in the vines um vines exhaustive um dictionary for the new testament and there's an old testament version of it as well but the new testament is good enough it's the greek word for hope and the word hope is translated into expectation of good okay and so so or something favorable or something good and it always usually ends with good the definitions there's m multiple definitions but basically the expectation of good is what hope is so if i have hope then i'm expecting something good to happen and so if people lose hope then that means they're no longer expecting anything good they've kind of become complacent in the place that they are they feel like it's going to be bad or nothing good is going to come from the situation and so that's a problem when people lose hope and so i had um, continuous studies about this and I thought well what's the issue that makes them have misplaced hope then because the, since hope is not gone God is saying hope is not gone it's just been misplaced what do we need to understand to understand why it's misplaced and so the Lord took me to Genesis the third chapter but before we get there let me give you a little background so Hope is the expectation of good, right? So if a person says that they're hoping something, then they're expecting something good to happen. So if I put my, I'm, I'm hoping that, um, that, you know, this job works out and I get a promotion. So that's a good, that's an expectation of something good. Now the dilemma is who defines good, right? Uh, because if I have an expectation of what I believe is good, I have hope. That, that that ends the whole definition of it. If I expect something good is going to happen, then I have hope. But what I think is good is not necessarily good to other people. And so what I might say, oh, uh, for example, we just had presidential elections, right? Our president is only like 100 and something days in office. So some people were hoping for the president that we got. And that was their expectation of good. They believe this president is good. I'm hoping for them to be elected. I'm hoping for them to take office. So that was their expectation of of what is good on the other hand there were other people who were wanting another person to be elected and so their expectation or their hope was that this other person would be elected and so you have two different hopes going forth two different definitions of what is good and so even opposing definitions right what this person's good and this person's good oh no no this person's good no that person's good and so we have this big place of of a uh, concept of what is good right? Because I can have hope if I expect something good, but what I expect that is good is not necessarily what you expect that is good. And so that's problematic, right? So we find that if we have just a generalized idea of what's good, we got to go back to figure out how do we get to the place where we all have definitions of good and those definitions of good are not necessarily the same. Because that's kind of an interesting thing. So we go to Genesis, the third chapter. So in Genesis, the third chapter, this is the time of the temptation of, of um, the humans from the serpent. So the serpent is talking to Eve in the garden and he's offering her, he's telling her about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And so they have a little bit of a conversation. She says she's not even supposed to touch the tree because she's going to surely die. And his response is, you won't die. The serpent replied to the woman, this is verse four of Genesis three. God knows that your eyes will be open as soon as you eat it. And, uh, wait a minute. Sorry. It, uh, sorry. God knows your eyes will be open as soon as you eat it and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. Okay. So, um, what is he saying here? Look, if you eat the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, you're going to be like God and you're going to know the difference between good and evil. 
So this is a peculiar concept, right? Because God doesn't want them to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And But the serpent is saying, no, you'll be like God if you do it. Then you'll know the difference between good and evil. Like you should eat from this tree. And so there's a conflict, right, about what, what should be happening. Well, essentially the serpent is trying to get them to disobey God. But moving, moving past it, they actually do do it, right? They eat the food. And the scripture doesn't um, say what we have to recognize is that the scripture doesn't say that they don't get that skill. They actually do get the skill of uh, being able to decide both good and evil, but it's their own definition, right? And so what happens is where we get to this place of what one person says is good and they expect it and they have hope in something good. And then this other person says, this is good. And they have hope and they expect this thing good. The reason why we have two different goods and possibly three different goods is because God was the one that was deciding what was good and evil. He was okay with that. He was okay being the standard of what is good. We ask him, God, what's good? He tells us what's good and we're fine. That was his way. That was his plan. It's like, okay, keep asking him, rely on him to know what's good and everything is going to be okay. Well, when, we, when sin entered in, we ate from the fruit uh, of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. We kind of turned our back on that concept of God being able to decide what is good and what is evil. Now we're deciding what's good and what's evil. So what does that mean? We may have different definitions. Just like I said with the, the elections, right? You got one person you think is good and this person thinks this other person is good. You both are hoping to get that person elected, but at the same time, that hope means expectation of good. What you believe is good is going to happen is different than what this person believes is good. Well, because we turned away from this concept of God being the universal decider of what is good. So what does that mean? That's exactly what God was trying to kind of talk to me about. He was like, look at their hope is misplaced. See, people sometimes think, oh, I hope I get this job or I hope I do this and I hope I do that and I hope I do this. But because our sight is so narrow, when we think we, we want something because we think it's good, we can only see this far, right? And we're talking about a God who can see everything. So he sees eternally all the way through everything. He knows if what we're hoping for is true truly good or if what we're hoping for in fact isn't hope at all because that that thing which we're expecting isn't good and so what he's saying is misplaced hope is the issue that people are putting their hope in things or hoping for things to come that aren't necessarily good but we can all be guilty of this right because we're all sinners we, Adam and Eve represent a people, humanity, who took a fruit, a bite of the fruit, wanting to decide what is good and what is evil. That's what we wanted. And we still, we still operate in that place. We still want to decide what is good and what is evil. Instead of letting God decide who was the author of this whole uh, idea of now I will determine what is good and what is evil. Instead of letting God do that, we want to do that, right? It starts in Genesis, the third chapter, but it continues on. And so what was God's word of encouragement as I was, as I was in prayer and meditation? He's like, listen, you got to help people to understand, encourage people. And I want you to understand, Erica, that you can't have a misplaced hope and think that misplaced hope is, is good for you. I'm telling you that if I don't say it's good, it's not good. And so I know many people have had like something they've been waiting for. They waited for it, waited for it. They really wanted something that was really important to get it. And then when they got it, they were disappointed. And so it no longer was good when they got it. And they're like, what? This is not what I thought that I was going to get something good. And this is not the good that I wanted from here. And the whole time is like, God is probably waiting, thinking, well, I wish you would have asked me. I wish you would have asked me if that was something that you should put hope in. Because if you're going to expect something good, you need to have a standard of good that is beyond your own imagination, right? That sees beyond what you think is important to what I think is important. And so that's the, the moral of... Of, of this lesson and this devotional here and you can go back to Genesis the third chapter and read what happens to Adam and Eve as they determine what is good we're going to continue with this devotional and look at where hope can get turned to the side and how we can kind of turn it back but before I mean, but as we build up to that, I want you to spend some time in prayer and meditation thinking about this. Have you put what you call hope in something to happen and it didn't happen and you were disappointed with God or frustrated with the circumstances or angry because it didn't work out? And did you ever come to the 
thought of saying, you know what, maybe that just wasn't good for me, right? <laughs> maybe that just wasn't the thing I should have put hope in or expected it to happen because that's not what is good in this situation. Even though it may look like it's good, it made my heart feel like it's going to be good. I might want to move myself and drive myself in the direction because it seems like it might be good. Does it really mean that it's good? That can be a complicated thing to recognize. That's why God wanted to decide for us. He wanted us to trust him to know what was good and go to him to ask him. Well, we've diminished that in a large way, but it's not an impossible task to ask God what is good and what is not good. It's just something that we don't commonly do. And so I want to encourage you, as you think about this, as you think about putting things in the right perspective of good, the right category of good, be encouraged and know that God is wanting to guide you through this process and that we're praying for you and we hope that you're praying for us. But we're going to continue the devotional and kind of dismantle this concept of misplaced hope. And so we'll see you tomorrow for another round devotional. Until then, be blessed.